Welcome to Ligna TV, where today we are talking about CFRP, carbon fiber reinforced polymers, that are being used increasingly in industry. And processing CFRP is also a big subject here at Ligna. That is why we are going to talk about how CFRP is best processed, why tools and dust can be a challenge in CFRP processing, and how these problems can be solved. And we have some truly interesting guests who I'm very glad to welcome. Firstly, Dr. Martin Dressler. He is Director of Research and Business Development at Leuco. Also, Florian Mauch. He is Area Sales Manager at Reichenbacher Hamuel. And Dr. Thomas Stehle. He is Chief Engineer at the Institute for Machine Tools at the University of Stuttgart. And before we get going with the discussion, we have a short piece for you. We visited a polymer processor and had a look at their production processes. Certex produces and develops fibrous composite materials. Because wood, plastics and composites have similar properties, Certex also purchased a 5-axis CNC cutting system. It is used to produce carbon fiber aircraft parts in series. Because of lightweight construction, our company has different requirements of a processing center than the metal industry, for instance. We have considerably lighter components that have to be machined completely differently than steel, for example. We have similar requirements to the wood industry, which is why we use this system here. Moreover, the 5-axis processing center also allows for customer requirements to be taken into account at much shorter notice because even smaller batch sizes can be reacted to immediately. Mr. Dressler, you manufacture tools for processing the most varied materials. We're here at a woodworking trade fair. Do you see parallels between CFRP and wood processing? Definitely. Wood processing is actually very similar to CFRP processing. Generally, many users are actually looking for metal processing where everything is homogeneous. But that is a misnomer, because every woodworker is dealing with materials that are processed like CFRP, that have to be processed differently in each direction, that are fibrous, that have a grain. Wood is much, much closer to CFRP than metal. So, wood is very similar to CFRP. What about from a scientific perspective? And I'll turn to you here, Mr. Stehle. How do you see the development of CFRP processing from a scientific perspective? I can only second what Mr. Dressler said. The similarities between wood and CFRP can be seen in many places. In both cases, we view the material to be processed as inhomogeneous. Processing depends on the direction. You can use similar tool technologies for both. We've brought along a number of examples. So, I mean, not least from a machine technology point of view, can we see considerable similarities. But these things cannot simply be applied identically. We have to carry out adjustments. And so we look at these things from a scientific point of view as well. A, from a fundamental perspective, and B, how it can be applied in industry, i.e. how can I transfer know-how of wood to the CFRP sector. And what progress are you making there? What developments can be seen? What's changing? Well, also led a little by industry requirements, there's actually a preference for tool development. Maybe also led by cost, because with that kind of tool, a few hundred euros, you see more than with a somewhat larger, more costly machine. So, like I say, the focus is a little more on tool development, and so on the one hand, I have brought the Vienna model along. Various processing steps are performed in this kind of CFRP panel. They're then assessed according to certain quality criteria, and the measure of these quality criteria is then, in principle, a measure of how good the processing is with respect to all elements. So we're talking about tools, processes and machines. 
Now, there are several challenges in CFRP processing. One is dust formation, and that's of course where you come in, Mr. Mao. What exactly do you do in this regard as a machine manufacturer? As machine manufacturers, we are of course particularly called upon here due to the fact that carbon processing, or the material itself, obviously has different properties to wood. On the one hand, it's very abrasive, it conducts electricity, and these properties mean we not only have to protect the machine, but of course the entire environment, so the operator, and so on. We have various models in action there. On the one hand, we've got Reichenbacher's own specially developed extraction head. So that means the shavings, or the dust, have to be extracted where they're actually produced. It's very important that we actually try to apply the extraction there to prevent them from ever entering the ambient air. So, on the one hand, right at the head. The second option is directly through the device. Many of our customers have series parts on the machines, but we can also use batch size 1 options with very variable clamping equipment. That means we make special drill holes in the devices to simply extract the dust directly below where it's produced. So you have two models. Uh, you wanted to say something? Yes, I just wanted to add. We can transfer this dust problem to the tool. When we use a tool that from the outset only produces minimal amounts of dust, that makes life much easier for the machine manufacturer. I've brought a tool with me here. It has considerably less teeth than conventional tools, so if I want to run it at the same feed, then I need to set a greater tooth feed. That is to say, from the outset I have larger shavings, and if you have larger shavings, that really minimizes the dust problem. That considerably reduces the health risks, and of course, with larger shavings that fall, you have much, much better options to collect them than if you have dust floating about in the air somewhere. Mr. Stele, maybe we can bring in the external scientific perspective a little. What new developments can you see here? Regarding extraction? Regarding extraction and dust in general? Well, for starters, let's take the many years of studies into woodcutting. I think quite a lot of progress has been made there. Good solutions have been found. Maybe not general, applicable solutions, but I think if a few refinements are made, we're in a pretty good place where extraction rates are concerned. Current efforts are being made towards, well, you know, because these extraction systems consume quite a lot of energy, they need a lot of electricity. So, efforts are being made towards low energy production methods to reduce energy rates. And this, of course, need not only be in the traditional woodworking sector, but also, if we're thinking about the transfer that the gentlemen here were talking about, CFRP processing, well, that can be applied exactly the same way. On the one hand, we have a high collection rate regarding the dust formed. But, on the other hand, we need to reduce the energy consumption of these processes. And that's one of the tasks that we, as an institute, we, as a university, want to tackle. Of course, energy also plays an important role here, but another challenge, of course, is tool wear in CFRP processing. That's where you come in, Mr. Dressler. What solutions do you offer? So, we examine different types of tools. You can find different examples of these on the market. On the one hand, you can find classic carbide tools with a very high tool wear. You can already see the tool becoming blunt and get worn out after a few centimeters. Carbon fiber contains very hard components which are very, very abrasive. The second type of tools you can find on the market are diamond-coated carbide tools. They often have the problem that the diamond coating flakes off very quickly, which means that you're using the carbide for cutting again quite soon.
Our strategy is different. We produce a PKD tool, a classic PKD tool, with a diamond blade. We arrange the blades in an order which protects them from nicks because the high axis angle avoids impacts. That way, we can avoid what PKD tools are actually known for in the industry, quick damage by nicks. This can be avoided by the blade arrangement I mentioned. All that's left then is the rounding of the blade, which results in a very long tool life. Mr. Mauch, your customers own and operate these machines and process CFRP with them. What are those customers' experiences? What do they tell you? Well, our customers' experiences, as I already mentioned, are linked to dust extraction. But we, as machine producers, of course aim to completely encapsulate the machine compartment from the operating room. Let's stay with toolware for now. What are the experiences here? Well, the experiences concerning toolware are that, when CFRP processing was new, the tools used to have a maximum tool life of two or three meters. Today, and that's particularly true for large projects like in the automotive industry, where we also have customers, the tool life is 30, 40, 50 meters. And we do not exclusively use classic milling tools. Of course, we also cooperate with technical universities, universities and research institutes, where disc milling cutters are equipped with saws, for example. Certain geometries here, or just straight geometries, are just sawed, because the lifetimes are just much higher. Those are so-called cutting discs, sometimes coated with diamond. We have had very positive experiences here, so this technique is used quite often. The tool lives of shaft tools are already significantly higher than they were a few years ago because the know-how is available today. More and more customers use these machines, and they cooperate, mechanical engineering companies and tool manufacturers, with institutes. I think that we can see a very fruitful cooperation here. As we see, there is a lot of development and the tools can be used longer and longer. A final question, Mr. Steele. We are here at Ligna, a woodworking trade fair. Do you think wood processing is the better solution for CFRP processing? Well, a simple answer is yes. However, that is of course quite a critical question. Because, without a doubt, the conventional metalworking companies also offer apt solutions. But, I already mentioned it before, CFRP and wood as materials are typically inhomogeneous materials, in contrast to isotropic ones like metals. That means that the similarities with wood are much greater. And, as I already mentioned, there are similarities concerning the necessary blade shapes and the refined diamond coating. My colleague Mr. Dressler also already mentioned the diamond layers flaking off and obtaining a very steep angle. Those are further similarities between CFRP and wood. The machine point of view is very important as well. We have very large workspaces at our disposal, which is what CFRP materials need, of course, due to their volume, due to the size of the constructions. As has also been mentioned before, dust extraction is also necessary for CFRP. And last but not least, the cost factor for investments is the most important one, in my opinion. A woodworking machine always represents a smaller investment than a metalworking machine. When the technology is right, and I can even get it cheaper, then, I think, wood machines with their wood tools will definitely be the winners. Not everywhere, necessarily, but in most areas, I think. And I hope you agree. <laughs> Plus, we're talking about the same issues concerning wood and CFRP. We always talk about nicks when we talk about wood. All over Ligna, you will see that nicks are an essential topic for tools. 
When we talk about CFRP, we might be talking about delamination, but basically what we're talking about is NICs. It's the same thing. People from the metalworking industry don't even know that term. We're really on the same page here, which is why I would like to second Mr. Stieler. We're much closer to CFRP, much closer than we think ourselves. That is to say, it looks like wood processing machines are the better CFRP processing machines. Do you all agree? Great, then we all agree. Thank you very much. Those were great closing words. This was an interesting discussion. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and goodbye.